Thank you for the introduction and the opportunity to be here today. I'll be talking um, about, a, about a couple of things, really. I'll be I'm talking predominantly about photonics, the photonics industry, um, and an invention that we, we came up with last year, and also a way to realise this invention, a manufacturing process. Um, and I think it's, it's topical that um, this manufacturing process has come along at the moment. It was interesting, I saw Goran Roos speak a few weeks ago, and uh, he was the thinker in residence here. And that, that was one of his recommendations coming out of his, his time here that you know, manufacturing, advanced manufacturing, really is the way to be going into the future. The uh, business that I'm in is photonics. Photonics is about photons. Photonics are really uh, like, if you look at electrons, electrons have a very big role in electronics. They're the work bit. Photons in photonics are the work bit. The problem is with photons, they're a little bit harder to generate than electrons. You can generate electrons by putting, getting a battery and that, allow, that gives you a certain amount of charge. You can use those electrons as you will. Whereas in photons, it's a bit trickier. You actually need to generate these photons using a laser. And lasers themselves have been around now for just over 50 years. And um, they've underpinned a lot of new technologies. Originally, when the laser was invented, it was said to be a technology looking for a, it was a solution looking for an answer. Sorry, it's an answer looking for a, um, a question. And those questions, you know, started arising. Defence were the first people to get into lasers. It's interesting, if you look at telecommunications boom, the entire dot-com boom was really based on breakthroughs in photonics. There were breakthroughs in lasers, breakthroughs in fibre optics, and breakthroughs in amplifiers. And that allowed this massive bandwidth increase that really happened in the 80s and is still happening today. So what I'm talking about today is a, a new type of laser we've, we've come up with. This laser, we believe, can open up new applications. I'll introduce as well uh, my collaborators in this work. This is work that's been done at Adelaide University over the last couple of years, and we've worked very strongly with Macquarie University. So the region we're, we're targeting, the spectral region we're targeting, is, is in the mid-infrared region. That's light that's in the infrared that we can't see, but it's very important these days. If you look at, um, for instance, it's appropriate with the cricket ground. Channel, in Channel 9's coverage, they use a thing called the hotspot indicator. They use a thermal camera, and you can see if the balls hit the edge of the bat or not. That's working in the thermal band. There's also a few, when the SARS epidemic was, was on, you could, your photo was probably taken by a mid-infrared camera. And again, that looked at the heat, and that allowed them to, you, to, me, to measure temperature, for instance. So you could deduce if someone had the virus or not, if their body temperature was elevated. That's the spectral region I'm talking about. It's an area where currently lasers are very expensive, um, and there really hasn't been the applications flowing in, in this region because of how expensive the lasers are. The other area where there's the opportunity is in terms of low-cost photonic laser man manufacturing. We've, um, once you can really manufacture low-cost lasers, you open up many, many applications. And the few of the air applications we're targeting are in defence, um, and they're in spectroscopic sensing, they're in trace gas sensing, they're in medical diag diagnostics. The areas we've brought together to realise this, this invention are, are three principal ones. One is the development of specialty glass. I work at the Institute for Photonics and Advanced Sensing down the road at Adelaide University, and again, over the last few years, we've invested heavily in, in specialty glasses. These are photonic glasses that, that are incredibly pure, uh, that we make typically fibre optics out of. The other key area is photonic manufacturing. This is a facility that's been um, developed at Macquarie University over a number of years, and this allows you to use lasers to modify the properties of materials. In this case, it's modifying the properties of these glasses. And the third area is laser development. Uh, that's my main background, and, and we've applied that to, uh, to these two other disciplines in order to, to realise this, this new photonic laser. Just show here a picture of a photonic glass manufacturing facility. This is at Adelaide University. This is our so-called glove boxes. This is where we make the glass. We make glass with incredibly high purity. Typical, typical purities 
that we use are around six nines purity, which is 99.9999% pure are the starting materials for these. We batch them in these, these uh, glove boxes, as you, as you can see, in incredibly inert environments. It's pure nitrogen and the environment has around one part per million water in it. That's how the glasses are fabricated and there's a number of furnaces um, and, and uh, we cast into, for instance, into platinum crucibles. Uh, a very precise process that we developed over the last few years. Now the actual photonic manufacturing. I show here a, a picture, you may have seen this type of glass art before, where you can take a, a block of glass, uh, probably about 10 centimetres long, and within that you can, uh, manufacturers can take a laser and focus it into this glass and effectively write 3D photos. They do this by focusing the laser down to a point and that effectively causes a void in the glass because of the high peak power of the laser. And then you can either translate the laser spot or the actual sample and you can draw a wire grid of, of something in there in the glass that you want to capture or show off. And that is the process we've modified. What, what we've done, where we've um, differ from this is one, the precision of our process is hundreds to thousands of times greater in, in what we write in glass. We're not writing structures that are tens of millimetres long. We're writing structures that are basically sub-micron in the glass. And secondly, it's, it's the type of glass we're using. We're sp using special glass. So you can see a, a picture on the, on the right there of the slide and that's the end view of one of the structures we're writing. That's the basis of this, the, this laser device we write. Very small scale structure and it's basically, it's around 10 microns across or 10 millionths of a, of a metre is, is the size of this structure. The, um, the device itself that we, we write, this invention, is shown on the, on the bottom right there. It's a small sliver of glass. It's about a centimetre long. Within this, we can write up to about 40 lasers in that device using this photonic manufacturing. We use another laser, what's called an ultra-fast laser that puts out very short pulses, 15 femtoseconds, or in a femtoseconds, 10 to the minus 15 of a second. We use these very high peak power pulses to modify the glass in a very controllable way. What we can do is write effectively stripes into the glass, and we, then we can finally tune where those stripes are in order to define this new photonic laser. So the entire device is, uh, the laser's not very bright. The entire device is, is within this structure here and then we can effectively set a laser up across that piece of glass. The process itself is, is very fast, right up to 40 lasers in less than five minutes. And the lasers themselves work very well. The best lasers in this class uh, have worked at around 20% efficiency. These ones work at 50% efficiency. So they're very efficient um, devices. Show here the actual schematic of or the actual laser operating in, in the laboratory. See here the laser chips defined, you can see the red arrow of, arrow of where the laser cavity is. This is where the actual amplification of the, of the light occurs. We pump it with a cheap laser diode, around the cost, a uh, laser diode that you buy for say a CD burner or a DVD burner, it's about 30 or $40. And this pumps the, the device which has external mirrors on it for this particular demonstration, but we, we've also developed a monolithic version where the mirrors are integrated onto the end of the chip. That is the entire device. Just touching on the IP position, um, the, we've put a, this is, we believe, very unique. We've put a provisional patent in and we'll be following up this hopefully with a full patent application in the next uh, couple of months. And the IP is jointly owned by Macquarie University and Adelaide University. So just showing where we are in terms of, well, really scaling up production. When we make these devices, uh, we can make them in fairly, uh, fairly large quantities, even now. It's actually easier to make them in large quantities than small quantities in terms of the sample dicing and the sample preparation. I show here a puck which has around 12 devices on it, 12 chips. That would provide effectively about 400 lasers just out of that one batch. Um, so you can really see there is a, it can get, it's a fairly easy process to productionise. 
We're looking at uh, new wavelengths and regimes of operation, so we really want to move further into the mid-infrared, which allows us to target other applications. We're also looking at different regimes of operation. Currently, this is a continuous wave laser. It's continuous output. But we're also looking at making it very short pulse, effectively down to better than a nanosecond pulse, shorter than a nanosecond. So that allows us to get very good ranging information. In terms of power, we've demonstrated over a quarter of a watt, which is about, from this small laser pointer, about 250 times what this laser pointer puts out, just from this tiny little device. And we've also demonstrated for high temperature operation at around 240 degrees, which may have some industrial applications. Just finish up here on where we see the opportunity. We're looking at this as an engine. It's, it's a new type of engine, and it's a new type of manufacturing process to realise this engine. My background is, is defence, uh, defence research. So I've been looking at um, electronic warfare applications. Particularly, most aircraft these days are moving towards having electro-optical sensors on board. So there needs to be small, compact, cheap lasers working in that band that you can use to test these missile warning systems. So that's one application we're looking at. Other applications that these are ideally suited to include, for instance, measuring wind profiles. You can actually measure wind fields using a laser, using a, a laser configured for a Doppler measurement. We can measure the, the speed of wind. So, for instance, in a wind farm, you deploy these and measure the wind coming on coming onto the actual blades and optimise the blade shape for maximum um, efficiency. You can also measure wind shear at airports, for instance. Again, you can clearly visualise the wind patterns and you can see if there's a, there's a shear occurring at a critical part of the runway. There's other applications in pollution monitoring. Optical spectroscopy is, a very, is an emerging area, but until the lasers are cheaper, you are not going to have uh, wide deployment. But these will measure carbon dioxide, water, formaldehyde, carbon monoxide, methane, a whole range of trace gases in a very cheap and very absolute precision, at very high absolute precisions. And then the other application we're looking at is medical diagnosis. For instance, you can determine a lot about a person's health by what is emitted out of the breath. NO emission can be an indicator, for instance, of vas vascular disease. And there's a lot of work just emerging in this area now. And I'll leave it there. Thank you.